two-hour voice on tonight on The Deuce. That'll be fun. It's a big week for uh, folks who have been waiting for the fall shows to start. You know what? And there's a big smell in the newsroom. Thank goodness it's not uh, scratch and sniff television. Because, oh, thanks a lot. No, I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. You, you've been quite proud of the, the garlic-infused creation that well, you made for yourself for we'll, lunch. We'll talk about that after. Let's talk about uh, the lunch kit first. Oh, wow. It is mm -mm yeah. Monday, and today we visited the lunch kit, the downtown Victoria Cafe, set to celebrate its second birthday this fall, and it has earned a, a loyal following for its soups, its salads, its uh, local free-range meat roasted in-house. The eatery is also part of a journey that began when its owner was a kid. Meet Michelle Scromita age five. With my Care Bears lunch kit, sitting in the dirt in a pink dress. I wish I had it still. Instead, she has a collection of other lunch kits, filling a restaurant called Lunch Kit. And it's good, hearty, homemade food. Brad and Michelle are siblings. What's it like working with your kid sister? I think it's great. Somebody has to be a success in the family, so. <laughs> it's her? Oh yeah, God knows it's not me. Well, Brad is self-deprecating, Michelle is confident. Who's the best sibling in your family? Me, for sure. He serves while she creates soups, salads, and sandwiches. Uh, sourdough bread from the Six Mile Bakery. Roast beef, we roast that here. We just try and do it medium rare. Slice it super duper thin. Aged cheddar cheese. I think big portions are better. Here it goes through in pingy, we also call them. Meet Impinji, or Impinging Ton, or Impinger, the other member of the Lunch Kit family. Loud, boisterous, noisy, yeah, really hot-tempered. When he's done, she adds homemade rosemary and Parmesan mayonnaise, crispy onions, all topped with spinach or arugula. And what is it served with? Uh, potato salad, Dijon potato salad with sunflower seeds, and that's a pickle. The final product. Mind-blowing, delicious credited to a team effort. Equal parts, and Pingy, myself, and Brad. And the cow. Back to the photo on the wall, Michelle says her five-year-old self would be proud of the upgrade from Care Bears to Cafe. I think she would be like, hey, way to go, girl. And you will find the lunch kit on Douglas Street in downtown Victoria between Johnson and Yates. And uh, almost 18,000, 18,000 people, no doubt still buzzing today after attending Rifflandia over the weekend. The fifth annual music festival showcased more than 100 artists throughout downtown Victoria. Royal Athletic Park featured two of Rifflandia's nine stages. The lineup included genres ranging from folk and rock to rap and dance music. Organizers say there is a demand for live outdoor music concerts, and Victoria is an ideal location for them. If you look at things like the restaurants and clothing and boutiques and coffee and all these things that are happening here and you know you match music with that, you bring in some of the best things you, you like about Victoria and match it with great world class music, it's a great fit. And last night Everlast played Royal Athletic Park followed by Mother Mother. Well, the Victoria International Chalk Festival is being called a success as well. The inaugural event featured street painters from around the world, including a 3D artist. This was created by California painter Tracy Lee Stum on the lower level of the Victoria Bay Center. She is the Guinness World Record holder for biggest chalk art painting. And uh, that piece, uh, it's relatively smaller, 26 feet wide, still wowed the crowds. I think it's, I think it's stunning. It's just excellent art. It's a fabulous vantage point up here on the third floor, and to me it just gives me a chance to experience it with the community, downtown Victoria. It's great. I think it's amazing, actually. It's really inspiring, especially as a teacher who works with young children, and they do art like this all the time. It's, it's pretty cool to see in person. As Stum finished her piece last night, the festival also featured local and international artists, uh, all working on Government Street, and it was temporarily closed between Yates and Forts.